I learned two things in Cheyenne. One, that Hucky Dummy is baking powder bread with raisins. The other, that love's labor is not always lost, even if you don't know how to use a gun. Frontier Gentlemen. an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. I had spent a week in Chugwater with hyena Bob Saunders, who ran the Cheyenne and Black Hills stage station. Now, I was on my way back to Cheyenne to send off to the London Times one or two of the more choice stories he had told me. There was only one other passenger in the stage with me, a man in his middle twenties. He introduced himself as Tom Hart. He was well-dressed, and at first glance, I took him to be an Easterner. No, I was born in Kansas. Reared in Montana territory. Now I call Wyoming my home. How about you? Uh, born in England. I'm trying to make a living writing writing articles on the West for the London Times. Oh, you been in Cheyenne yet? Oh, yes. Well, how are things? Well, it, that's hard to say. I haven't seen too much of it. Three years since I was there. I guess the town's changed now. <laughs> This road sure hasn't. <laughs> well, Cheyenne's thriving, I can tell you that. Yeah, I've heard. Big cattle interest. I gather you're coming back from the east. <laughs> These fancy dude clothes, huh? Yeah, I've been in the east and other parts. Man gets tired of drifting, though. Comes time to go home, that's where I'm headed. Cheyenne? Yeah, I made me some good money. Now, I figure to get married, raise a flock of kids. That's a worthwhile project. There's a girl in Cheyenne, Kendall. We've been writing. These ways up to a year back, I got a letter from her when I was in New York. I wish you luck. Thanks. You married? No. Well, they say it ties a man down, but I figure if a gal's got her mind made up for marriage... Might as well drop your rope on her, because if you don't, somebody else is going to. <laughs> I see you have the, the philosopher's attitude toward marriage. Well, I don't know about that, but I've been lone wolfing long enough. Carrie's her name. Carrie Hudson. Used to be a cookie pusher up at the Blue Star Cafe. A cookie pusher? A waitress. Oh. I'll tell you what. When we get in town, you come on up with me to the Blue Star used to have the best eats in town. I guess they still do. I'll be proud to have you meet, Carrie. We spent the rest of the journey discussing matters of both consequence and triviality. Hart had received no formal education, but his travels had given him a certain sophistication, and the time passed pleasantly. When we arrived in Cheyenne, I tried to persuade him that his fiancée would be much happier to greet him alone, but... Hart would have none of it. He insisted that I accompany him, and so together we walked to where he knew the Blue Star Cafe to be. Charlie Bannister runs the place. Charlie looks like bad medicine. There's some says he used to be a short trigger man, but it ain't true. By the way he looked after Carrie, you'd think she was his own daughter. I sure had to play it straight before Charlie let me start riding herd on the gal. Say, listen, you hungry? A little. Well, you wait till you taste Charlie's hockey dummy. He used to be a range cook, and there's never been a man made hockey dummy the way Charlie makes it. Uh, uh, hey, that's funny. Huh. Looks as though it's closed. Now it does for a fact. First time I ever knew the blue star to close. Can you see anybody moving around in there? No. Hmm. 
She's open. Hello, Charlie. Whoever you are, come on in back. I sure don't figure. Hey, Charlie, you old... What do you say, Tom? What? Charlie, this is a fella I met on the stage coming in. J.B. Kendall. How are you? Hello, Charlie. What's happened? How'd you get like this? I guess you ain't heard. There was a shoot-up in here a year or so ago. Carrie. Is Carrie all right? When it was finished, the boys had done the shooting, robbed me, and I tailed it out. I ain't moved from the bed since, Tom. What about Carrie? She ain't here no more. Well, where'd she go? Ask Jack Feeney up to Holloman Saloon. I'm asking you, Charlie. And I ain't saying. You and me was friends, Tom. I just leave, keep it that way. Now, what's Jack Feeney got to do with it? What, Charlie? All right, I'll tell you. Carrie took a shine to him while you was gone. That's a lie. I told Feeney to leave her alone. There was words. I threw him out. Same night, he comes back with one of his boys, and they fill me full of lead. Well, wasn't this Feeney arrested then, Charlie? Sure, but it was his word against mine, and... Carrie took his side and swore at the trial it was someone else had come in and shot me up. Is she with Feeney now? I ain't seen her since that day. Hey, Tom, boy, while you're here, pump me a jug of water, will you? Old Doc Thorne says I got to drink plenty of water. And Mrs. Carroll's been helping out, but she ain't showed up yet today. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I'll be right back, Charlie. Thank you. I ain't got the stomach to tell him all the truth of it. You'll have to find out sooner or later for yourself. She married Feeney. Oh? When? Yeah. Right before the trial. Guess it was partly my fault. I should have seen it. Gary getting lonesome waiting for Tommy and Feeney coming in here. His fancy spending ways. He runs a gambling in Holloman Saloon. Well, next thing you know, Carrie's looking cow eyes at him. Well, don't you think it'd be better to tell Hart now about the marriage? Say, listen, you keep an eye on him, will you? Tom's got a bad temper. He gets it in his head to start trouble, there's likely to be a killing. All the more reason to tell him then. This way, he'll go up to the saloon looking for her. Yeah, I guess you're right. It wouldn't be so good. Here's your water, Charlie. Is there anything else I can do for you? Yeah. Stay away from Holloman's saloon. I lied to you before, Tom. She's there with Feeney. They're married. Anything else I can do for you, Charlie? No, I reckon not. Hey, hey, come on back and see me if you have a mind to. I'd sure like to hear about your travels. I'll do that. So long. You take it easy, Tom. Yeah, uh, goodbye, Charlie. You, you take it easy, Tom. Well, I guess I'll be seeing you, Kendall. Where will you go, Tom? Not that it's any of your business, but I guess you ask out of kindness. I'm going up to Holloman's Saloon and have me a few drinks. Oh, well, mind if I come along? No. No, I don't mind. We walked down the main street. I knew it was pointless to tell him that trying to see his girl was the worst thing he could do to himself. I rather liked him, and I suppose that's the reason I went with him. He didn't say a word until we reached the saloon. Then he said... You go ahead, Kendall. I'll meet you in there in a few minutes. I got an errand to do first. Well, I'll come with you. I don't mind. I do. Just order me a bottle of whiskey. I'll see you inside. All right. Well, hello, stranger. You're a little early, but what's your pleasure? Cards? A dance? Drink? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm looking for Carrie... Oh, for what? Are you Carrie? Yes. Um, can we sit at the table? I don't sit with customers, mister. That's for the girls. You want to talk business, you can talk to my husband. A friend of yours is in Cheyenne. Tom Hart. Tom? He's just heard about you. He'll be coming in here in a minute. I thought you ought to know. Thanks, mister. How... How did he take the news? He got it from Charlie. Well, he'll probably get very drunk. 
I imagine I'd do the same. He won't make trouble. I'll try to see that he doesn't. Has he said anything about me? Only that he was expecting to marry you. He didn't write. I, I thought... It doesn't matter. Anybody got the price of a drink in his pockets, welcome. That goes for Tom Hart as well as the next man. You want a table, mister? Uh, yes, a table would be fine. This way. What are you drinking? Oh, beer, I think. Uh, yes, and a bottle of whiskey. My husband... Jack doesn't like him. I wouldn't want Tom to get hurt on account of me. Will you get him out of here if he's looking for someone to sharpen his horns on? I'll do my best. Thanks. Beer and a bottle of whiskey, Lister. Beer and a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> well, where's the drinks? On their way, Tom. <laughs> What's the gun for, Tom? She's right clean and shining, ain't she? Sent me back $20. Put it away. Uh -uh. I bought it and I aim to use it. As soon as I get drunk enough, I'm gonna kill me a skunk called Feeney. In a moment, we return to Frontier Gentlemen. Fast with a quip, faster at making time with a beautiful girl, but fastest of all with a clue. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, will be along with his latest insurance investigation later today on CBS Radio. Get next to Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar on most of these stations. Now, we return you to the Anthony Ellis production of Frontier Gentlemen. <laughs> Tom Hart and I sat at a table in Holloman's saloon, and between us lay a brand new 44 revolver. After a moment, Tom picked it up and slowly rotated the cylinder. He didn't turn as Carrie came toward us, didn't look up as she put down my beer and Tom's bottle of whiskey. Yes, sir. It's a mighty pretty talking iron. How are you, Tom? Hmm? Oh, Carrie. Yeah, I, I heard you was here. Well, you're looking good. You know, back east, they, they drink a toast to new married folks. So I drink to you, Carrie. <clears throat> well, where's your husband, Mrs. Feeney? Jack's out. Don't make trouble, Tom. What's done is done. That's the way you see it, huh, Carrie? You never wrote. I didn't have to. You were my girl. I told you I'd be back, but you couldn't wait. I waited two years. You was in such a hurry, you had to get Feeney to put Charlie out of the way, too. That's hmm? not so, Tom. Charlie, he's lying in bed. He don't move anything but his arms anymore. Your husband did a right fine job. You ain't even been to see him since. That doesn't do much good, you know. She's not the same anymore. At first I thought she was, but she's not. She was a girl... A nice girl when I left. She got too much paint now. Looks like a honky-tonk woman. Finish your drink, we'll go. There's time. There's plenty of time. I want to have a talk with Jack Feeney. He shot up a friend of mine, you remember? <clears throat> you want to leave? It's all right, Kendall. You go ahead. I'll stay. You want a whiskey to chase down that beer? No, thank you. You know why I'm going to get drunk? <laughs> I've got a rough idea. Yeah? How rough? Well, Tom, you know, you really haven't got any right to start trouble with Feeney. What about Charlie? What about him? The court said Feeney was innocent. Charlie says he did it. And if you shoot Feeney, they'll find you guilty. What'll you prove? She said she was gonna wait. She said she loved me. Now, ain't that a laugh, love? That's why you're getting drunk. Then you'll be able to get angry without thinking. You talk too much. Well, you asked me. <sighs> Where'd she go? Up the stairs. Hey, you figure she was lying. Maybe Jack Feeney's here. She's gone up to tell him. I don't know. Well, I'm going to find out. No, I wouldn't. No, uh, sit down, Tom. Give me that gun, Kendall. Now, you sit down. 
You're not that drunk yet. And you're not going up there to start shooting. Give me the gun. No. You're bigger than me, but I ain't afraid to tangle with you. I didn't say you were. All right. I'm going up there without a gun. Oh, don't be a fool. Tom. Don't rile me, mister. Tom, she's married to him. You'll find another girl. Hey, where are you going? How come you're going up to me in my wife's rooms? I figured to find you there, Feeney. Well, Tom Hart. That's right. I stepped out for a while. If I'd known you was going to pay a visit, I'd have come back sooner. Have you seen my wife, Tom? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen her. Well, we'll have to get her down and have a friendly drink together. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting your friend. J.B. Kendall. Put her there, Kendall. Gary! Come on down. Hey, Lester, bring a bottle of champagne. I didn't come to drink with you, Feeney. I came to kill you. <laughs> well, sure, you can do that any time, but you'll have a drink first, huh? Here, sit down, boys. When'd you get back in town, Tom? Today. And I seen Charlie. Yeah? I heard about Charlie. You know, it's too bad him getting shot like that. The way Charlie tells it, you did the shooting. Poor fella. They say it made him a mite loco. Here's your champagne, Mr. Feeney. Uh, and here comes the prettiest little woman in Cheyenne. Sit down, Carrie. I hear you've met Mr. Kendall here. And Tom? Yes. Well, it's like old times. Except a thing or two has changed. I got me a new wife. What'd you get back east, Tom? I'm telling you something, Feeney. I had a gun, which a friend of mine didn't figure I was drunk enough, or, or maybe sober enough to use. Well, I'm going out and get another one. And the next time I see you, I'm going to be using it. He sure is excitable, ain't he? You figure he's still galling over you, Carrie? What does it matter? What do you think, Kendall? I think that Tom Hart's in a mood for murder. Whether it's because of your wife, or Charlie, I don't know. Jack didn't shoot Charlie, Mr. Kendall. I know he didn't because we were together that night. That's true. Must have been a couple of cowboys dropped into Charlie's place and robbed him, gave him lead poison, but it wasn't me. Why does Charlie say it was? That was at the trial, he said it then, too. Of course, my lawyer, he showed where it was dark in Charlie's cafe, and Charlie couldn't rightly tell who was in there that night. Charlie figured it was me, because we'd had words the same day. I think I'd better find Tom. Now, nah, don't you go worrying, Kendall. You cool down. Besides, Tommy ain't no kind of a hand with a gun, and he knows it. If he comes looking for me, we'll take care of him. Which was exactly what I was afraid of. I spent the next hour going from one saloon to the next, looking for Tom. I couldn't find him. And so I went back to see the one person who I thought might be able to help. No, he ain't come back here. Took it bad, huh? Yes. Yeah, it's a trouble with that boy. Everything nice and easy with him. Never could figure what he was really thinking. But when he busted loose... Charlie, are you still positive it was Feeney who shot you? Sure I am. Well, Carrie says he was with her that night. She's lying. Why would she lie? Well, don't ask me how come a woman does what she does. I think the one reason that Tom's going after Feeney now is a matter of pride. He doesn't want to back down. He'll use you as an excuse. I don't need any man to fight my war. Do you think there's any chance, even a remote one, that it was dark that night you were shot and perhaps you were mistaken about Feeney? Well, I guess there's a chance, but... Charlie, if I can find Tom, if he knows that, if you'll tell... Shh. Time. Carrie. Is he here? No. I had to come. I don't want him to get hurt. I wanted to talk with him. Ain't much for you to say, seems to me. I made a mistake. I'm not making another. It was Jack shot you, Charlie. I lied for him. Uh -huh. He said if I didn't either he or his boys, it'd get you for good. He said he'd kill me, too. Then why'd you marry him? I had to. That doesn't matter now. We've got to find Tom. Jack sent two of his boys out looking for him. He wants to kill Tom. Why? I guess he knows. He's always known how I feel. And 
I'm going back to the saloon. You'd better stay here, Carrie. Couldn't find him, huh? No. Well, he's probably sobered up by now. He'll be all right. Yeah, nice fella, Tom. Just a little too hot-headed for his own good, that's all. Well, I imagine when a man comes home and finds his girl married to another man, it can be a little upsetting. Sure, sure. And then seeing a good friend of his lying paralyzed, shot by the man who married his girl, it's likely to make a chap unreasonable. Even though he's wrong, yeah? I see what you mean. Then if... if he finds out that the girl's husband forced her to lie, and if he finds out that the girl still loves him, he'd be in quite a state. Yeah, that wouldn't be so good, would it? Hmm. Now, if I were the husband, I'd want to get rid of that fellow, say, a fellow like Tom, because my life wouldn't be safe for one minute. I'd send some men out looking for him with orders to shoot on sight. You got any more ideas along that line? Well, if... A man like Tom had a friend. The friend wouldn't want to see Tom, uh, bushwhacked, I think is the word. That friend is talking himself into a mite of trouble. <laughs> you think so? Then the friend would make another suggestion. Yeah. The husband is quite obviously a most unpleasant person. And the best thing he could do would be to give his wife a divorce so that she can live a decent life with Tom Hart. I'm back, Feeney. Yeah, I see you are, Tom. Candle, get away from me. I'm giving him a chance to draw, which is more than he did for Charlie. You heard him, Kendall. It's a fair fight. I heard. Tom, look out! Behind you! I thank you, Kendall. Oh, not at all. Those are two of Mr. Feeney's chums. They've been looking for you. Now... Feeney, you were saying something about a fair fight. Now listen, Tom. Draw. I ain't fighting with you. You ain't got the guts of a lizard. Draw. I told you I ain't. Dirty son of a gun. I ain't fighting. Well, I ain't. <laughs> Sounded as though you broke his jaw, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't. I think Mr. Feeney will be leaving town. I also think he'll want to give Carrie a divorce. Oh? I thought you might be interested. Incidentally, what would you have done if he had drawn on you? I don't know. Never thought about it. He probably would have killed me. <laughs> yes. I think he would. Well, I'll take care of the arrangements here. You better go over to Charlie's now. Carrie's waiting. Waiting? For me? Well, uh, I don't imagine it's for me. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Virginia Gregg, Jack Crucian, and Harry Bartell. Music was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentlemen. John Wall speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.